Hey guys, it's Thomas from the Booze and BJJ podcast. I just walked in from a no gi class. Um, it was actually really good. Oh, one second. One second. Hey folks, um, when I start when I start the show, like I appreciate the messages, but um, try to try to ask me the questions in Twitch chat because otherwise. I, I gotta look at my phone, it's a little bit weird, it throws me off a little bit. Um, so, anyways, um, yes. So anyways, yes, welcome to the Booze and BJJ podcast. Um, I'm starting the show solo today. Uh, Wole will be joining us in a little bit. Um, so like I said, I just got back from a no-gi class tonight. That was actually very interesting for me, and the reason why it was very interesting, um, oh gosh, guys, like seriously, hold on a second. Twitch chat, please, Twitch chat. All right, <clears throat> now the reason why it was interesting to me was, um, it was a small class, and I got to work with a beginner who had a heavy wrestling background, and two beginners that had no kind of jujitsu or any kind of grappling background at all. And what made it interesting was that I was actually paying attention to how I was answering their questions, and even for me... It, 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 it was like about a, it was like a, a self-discovery moment for me. You know, at the end of class we're sitting around talking and they were asking me questions about certain things like you know how can you help me improve and how can how can I improve? like if I'm stuck in this position, what do I do? And when I would answer, when I give them the when I gave them my honest answer to whatever their questions were, it 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 it, it's, it struck me weird. It's like these guys are looking up to me to help them improve, but you know, I don't necessarily feel like I'm one that folks should be asking these questions to yet. And and I was thinking about why that was. And I believe I still have a degree of imposter syndrome going on. And I know that's something that we've talked about before on here. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just weird, you know, I, imposter syndrome is a very weird thing because your coach evaluates you and then they award you your rank or they give you your rank, whatever, award, give, you earned, whatever. So really that on its face should be enough if you trust your coach, and you should trust your coach, to be a signal that you are actually ready for whatever rank they give you. But there's all, it seems to be pretty common that there's always like a bit of self-doubt with people as they go up the ranks. And I don't know if that's just human nature or if it's just uh, something else, but it seems to be a very interesting thing to me. And... I guess it pops up whenever I have these question and answer sessions with the younger guys, but it also goes away as well after a while. Because as, as I process the, the moment, as I process the interaction, it's like, well, actually, it, I think I do know um, enough to be able to help them here. And then the doubt settles in again. And then I, it, it, for me, it kind of flip-flops back and forth. It's like, do I really, do I really deserve to be in a position where I have this influence over these guys who are trying to learn this martial art? You know, am I good enough to? Yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. The rank is obviously where I'm at, and I don't feel bad about giving these people advice. But if, if it, it's like a flip flop, it flip flops back and forth for me. And I'm probably going off on a weird tangent, but. You know, those are my thoughts on the subject, which is okay. You know, everybody's different. 
And I know some people who don't get that way. And that's fine too. One moment. But anyway, so it was very interesting seeing these three guys at least try some of the, the techniques that I showed them last week, like sharing techniques with them and whatnot. And, you know, one guy in particular was playing um, half guard with a butterfly hook. And that's the way that I kind of played butterfly guard now with a butterfly hook instead of a shin shield. And it worked out pretty well because there's a constant threat of being swept. But just watching that guy do play the guard that I showed him, you know, it's like this is my preferred guard when I play half guard, or rather this is my preferred variation of half guard. Just watching him play it and then potentially hit techniques from it was actually just, you know, just a really cool feeling. But anyways, I'm ranting. Um... Oop. Hold on a second. So, anyways, people are bombarding me with questions, so I guess this is a good point to do question and answer time. So, let's start with the first one. Well, A is still not here yet. Uh, let's double check. Nope. Not yet. Just me. Alright, so let's see. One moment. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Outside. Oh, let's try this one outside of. What does it say? I can't read this. Outside of drilling in class. Outside of drilling slash in... What? Learn to English. Outside of drilling slash in class practice, how does one improve their BJJ? Oh, that's easy. Just keep showing up. Um, that's the that's the first thing, you know. Just keep keep showing up, keep going to practice. Uh, supplement your in class practice with open mats. Uh, drill everything. Um, the other thing is something that I always tell bigger guys, and you know, people have natural attributes that help their help them in not only BJJ but other combat sports. Uh, speed, speed, strength, fe flexibility, and speed, strength, flexibility. I think those are the three primary ones that I, that I usually discuss. But yeah, speed, strength, and flexibility. Um, whatever, identify your primary attribute. If your primary attribute is speed, slow down. If your primary attribute is flexibility, don't play those sticky guards where you can take advantage of your flexibility. Um, don't play those as much play other guards to try to bring your skill set up um, and your strength advantage don't use anything above your baseline strength if you start straining to push somebody or or straining to pull someone tone that down tone it down by to if you can imagine it 30 40 maybe 50 percent of what you believe your strength level is and is you know Hit, if you got to find that sweet spot where it's just your ba base level strength, and to some people, again, that might be 30, 40, 50 percent um, intensity. Um, roll from that point. Don't use your strength advantage. Uh, when I was a larger guy, when I first started out, uh, I was making up with my gaps in technique by using my, you know, my full bore strength. Uh, level against whoever I was rolling with and that didn't really in the long run in hindsight that didn't really work out too well because instead of learning the proper way of getting out of or into you know whatever situation 
that popped up during my rolling. I would rather I ended up simply just powering out of it. Oh, here's Wole. And we'll get his um, we will get his input on it in a second. You're on mute. Hey. Hey. What's good? Tired. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, man. I know, I know how it is. So, I started started the show already. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm doing, like, a question and answer thing again. Ah, cool. Yeah. How you been? Been okay. Um, lots of work. Never enough time for jujitsu. Yeah, I, I know how that is. Yeah. 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 So my work week three weeks ago was was a big crunch, and they said that that was the end of it. And two weeks later, still in a big crunch, just different cr crunches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a big deadline. You gotta you gotta do this stuff. All right, done. Thank you. Moving on. You're not done yet. We have this other deadline. You need to do all of this stuff. It's like, yeah. seriously? <laughs> okay, done. Thanks. Cool. Moving on. One last thing. Oh, my God. You have to do this in five days. It's like, what? Really? Okay. <laughs> so that yeah. that third crunch was supposed to end today. No, it did it. I'm oh, dude, I don't think it's going to end until another two weeks. <laughs> so what's, what's been going on, Wally? Um, not much trying to get some training in. I've not been able to do that. Um, I might be checking out. Um, I I've been I've been given free reign for Father's Day, so mm -hmm. I might check out somewhere to roll. Um, I also might check out Bitter on Monday. Uh, wait, is it Monday? That's all. Are they open Monday? Yeah, yeah. Monday is a holiday in DC, so. Okay. Uh, but they're open. Open that. What time? Uh, I think they said like Muay Thai is like, I would say nine to eleven, and then BJJ is like eleven to one, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. If I'm back but, in time, I'm I might actually join you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll find out. Uh I'll message you. Okay. Is there a, is Capital open on Sunday? No. Cap Capital? Yeah. Sorry, not Capital. Um Chantilly. On Sunday? Yeah. Uh not that I know of. I was planning on going to Woodbridge. Oh, okay. For Grand House. Uh, Oh, that's true. What time is Grand House? Nine to eleven. Uh, I might have to do that. Yeah, I mean, if Chantilly was open, it would be later, like later on. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think a number of I think Jor at least Jordan and Mythat and a couple other people are going to Grand House. So, oh, uh, I think I might do that. Yeah, I I'm doing it. So. Oh, wait, actually, I need to figure out if there are plans so that I'm not aware of yet. Yeah, just tell them to push it back to later. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this is more important. No, nah, I got to go to church. <laughs> church. <laughs> Grand that, House is my church. Dude, that's, yeah. what, that's what I tell people. It's like, you know, my neighbors <laughs> are like, hey, hey, Tom, where are you going? Church. See you later. Like, yeah, yeah. You're dressed mighty. It's like you're dressed mighty fancy, Tom. Where are you going? Are you in the choir? What's like, up? Why are you wearing spandex if you're going to church? It's like, ah, <laughs> different kind of church, you know. Yeah. Is that your choir robe you have on? No, it's my gi. Dude, you know what? I bought a gi off uh, Amazon. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't realize it was a judo gi. 
Yeah. You know, it was inexpensive. It looked like it was well made. It was unbleached, which is what I wanted. And I got mm. it. It's a freaking judo gi. And I, I, did, I had no idea. The sizes were the ju- jiu gi sizes. Like, uh, you know, their size table. Yeah. So I picked A3. And it fits It fits like an A3. But when you look at the sizing on it, it's it's like, it's not, it's obviously not a jiu-jitsu gi. It's yeah. like the bottom is longer. And yeah, and the sleeves are, yeah. are there's there's like more material where yeah. a judo gi would have more material. It's definitely a judo gi. Yeah, I, I got hoodwinked. <laughs> I mean, it was only like 40 bucks, but. Oh, well, that's super cheap. Yeah, so like, yeah, I'm going to try this. But you get what you pay for. <laughs> That's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, what do you call it? It's a sign that you need to go back to judo. I can't go back to judo. <laughs> my knees, my knees would break. Yeah. yeah. You know what I did try the other day, though? Mongolian wrestling. Oh, yeah? How'd mm-hmm. that go? Um, so, I don't know the rule set completely, and quite frankly, my stand-up is trash compared to these guys. But yeah. um, it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of their, uh, a lot of the takedowns. Um, this one guy, Miga, tried on me. I basically mm-hmm. just danced out of him, like break dance, like I like up rocked out of his his sweep attempts. It, <laughs> it, it was funny. Like I'm sitting there, like oh, he's going after my leg, and out. And out and out and he was he was going at it. He did like a sequence of four like leg sweeps and trips, and I just mm-hmm. kind of like glided out of them. It was actually kind of fun. Was it, was it like at a party? Yeah. No, it was at Chantilly. Oh, Chantilly. Yeah, cool. it was it was after class. Like they started pulling out like the the uh, traditional stuff, like yeah. the traditional clothing. Did you put like, that on too? Nah, I just put my I took my gi jacket off and put my belt on. So they were gripping that. Um, there is a fourteen year old kid there named Tamuda. He is five ten, two twenty five, fourteen oh, years old, and he fights like a man. <coughs> and I cannot wait to get old because I want to fight him. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna have him up here because I've already been planting those seeds, right? So every time I see him yeah. pick on him, I give him like the the crazy eyes. I'm like, "Where are you going, boy?" And he's like, "Uh, who's this crazy?" <laughs> he's like, "Tom, you're nuts." And I'm like, "No, I got you." But he's he's yeah. a, he's actually cl- come really close to submitting me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we do stand-up, like, whether it be Mongolian wrestling, judo, or whatever, he always hits me at least once. And this is at not even 15. He's actually, did I say, I think I may have said he was 15. He's about 14. Oh, I did say 14? Yeah, he's 14 years old. Yeah. I I cannot wait. How old? Two what? Huh? 14 and he's two what? And wait? 225. Yeah. He's like basically me. Well, heavy, a little bit heavier than me, but he's yeah. basically me. He's five ten, two twenty five. When I first met, when I first met him about two years ago, we were mm-hmm. the same height. He was maybe a, a hair shorter than me, and I had ten pounds on him, so he's like one ninety. So, he 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 grew two inches and gained thirty pounds. <laughs> like I asked his parents, like, "What do you feed this guy? Because I need what you're feeding him." Give me that. So. Yeah. So I just decided I got to start keeping a, a jiu-jitsu diary. Yeah. And I try this out, see how it works. So what I do for mine, I made a private page on Facebook. And every time I do an entry, I just I put it there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always like, I'm going to type it up on my phone as soon as class is done, but I don't do that. I feel like I need to actually write it down and then maybe later on I'll put it into, you know, some sort of electronic format. Yeah. Um, on that note, something I wanted to do was like start recording uh, techniques. Yeah. Just like have a video library of techniques. 
mm-hmm. because I'm starting to notice that like um, if I'm in a hairy situation, sometimes I'll pop out with a with something I saw like a, years ago or a long time ago, yeah. and it's like once I realize what just happened, it, it it's weird to me. It's like where did I learn this? Like who did I learn this from? Yeah, I got a bunch of videos because uh, uh, Pentagon I used to film like Sergi so after class he'll do the the technique and yeah. I'll film it, but I I need to like organize that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I um. So at No Gi earlier today, like a lot of the guys were asking me for feedback after I watched him roll, mm-hmm. and um. It was a little bit odd to me because I went through a wave of imposter syndrome and then yeah. not imposter syndrome because they, you know, most of these guys are beginners. One guy specifically has a wrestling background and the other two, like nothing They're They started with jujitsu. And when they were asking me for feedback, I was just like, Oh God, like I feel come that guy. Like, I'm that guy. So, but when I started answering their questions, it went after I started hearing myself, you know, respond to them, then it went away. But I don't know if this. Go ahead. You got enough what? No, I was going to say, I don't know if this imposter syndrome is going to go away for me. I feel like I'm going to have it at least some level for. I I don't know. I, I think that at some level, you're always going to have it. You know, especially being that it's, you know, it's a sport where you have folks who've been doing this for like decades, uh, you know, you look up to them and you're like, man, I'm probably ne- I'm never going to get that good, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's weird. Like sometimes I have lower belts asking me questions and I'm just like, I'm, I'm just a lowly blue belt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a, a Rory brew belt. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, that's my my. Um, I'm making fun of my uh, younger son's accent. <laughs> yeah, he's got a he's got like a slight speech impediment. Mm. Yeah, he can't do L's or R's very well. Mm. Mm. But either way, I think it's R. But anyways, um, but yeah, like it 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 at first it was weird to me because they were asking me feedback. Mm-hmm. You know, and I gave him pointers and, you know, I was cool with it afterwards. But like I yeah. said, I feel like I'm going to have this forever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's better that than the, uh, than the, the opposite of like, I know everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or being an actual imposter, you know. <laughs> True. I'm going to self-promote hey, myself. Look at, black, look, look at the black belt. I just got promoted to from purple. Yeah. It's like, Tom, who promoted you to black belt? Uh, Jesus. Myself. That's back <laughs> I, I, I would totally just prank somebody with that. Just show up to... No, I would. I couldn't do it. I'd get... I'd get, <laughs> I'd, I'd get rocked. I would get rocked. But, oh, so interesting thing is... One of the guys from today asked me what my opinion on him going into MMA was. And mm. I wasn't exactly sure how to answer him. Mm. So I gave him my best assessment. I said, look, you have a wrestling background. You're picking up no gi very well. You know, I, from what, uh, you know, my cousin says, you're good at Muay Thai. From all that come together i would say on paper you sound like a good candidate for mma but i'm the wrong guy to talk to you have to talk to somebody on a higher pay grade than me and you know i was worried that he was going to take it a little little some way because i think he wanted me to say yeah go for it you know but i saw the wheels turning after the answer go ahead yeah that's kind of a hard question to answer because you know like you're saying if, if I don't have an MMA background, I'm not going to really, I can't really evaluate your skills. I can evaluate your separate skills. Right. But I can't evaluate your skills combined to, you know, for, for MMA. But yeah, I mean, I, yeah. was he thinking about doing it like a professional or just like trying it out? 
well, he had a very reasonable idea of kind of what he wanted to do. He wanted to start at amateur, start at amateur, and then work his way up, if anything. Yeah. So. You should talk to. You should talk to Kelsey. That was something I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that they could. I think that would be a good like. I guess long distance mentorship for him. Because. Mm -hmm. She doesn't live in the area anymore. Oh. Oh yeah. 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 yeah she li I forget where she moved to. But... She's still in a full time, right? And then the army. Well, MMA. Oh, is she doing MMA full time? Uh, yeah. Right. I don't think she was because she's. I thought she was still active duty. Well, I mean, like besides being active duty. Oh. Uh, then yes, I think so. Yeah. Oh man, speaking of uh, speaking of training partners in MMA, have you seen Charles recently on on his Facebook page? Yeah, I've I've seen him. Is, is he getting back into it? I know she wanted to do it. Um, pro. Nah, he got swole. Yeah. Sorry, one sec. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sorry. I'll be yeah. Um, give me one minute. Okay. Well, hang on. So, while he's doing his thing, um, I'm going to do like three other questions. And I think the ones that we're going to do are uh, hold on, let me highlight them as I go along. Uh, how do you hand. Wow, man, y'all need to y'all need to write me um, using better grammar because you're hemming me up on these on the, on these questions. Um, how do you handle gym cancers? What do you think of leg locks and wrist locks? What how, would you recommend a twenty five year old man start teeing MMA? Yeah, dude, grammar, grammar check. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna go over those questions real quick. Uh, we're gonna answer those questions. But while a, while Wale is is coming back, I will answer the second one. Second question is how do you handle gym cancers? Now that's a very tough, 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 tough question because there's, for me, it depends on a couple different factors. One, is this gym cancer injuring people? Two, how hard have you, what effort have you done to steer them away from being a gym cancer and a positive, constructive member of your gym? Um, I will admit that there are some people who any kind of positive criticism or constructive criticism isn't going to be met well at all. And, um, yeah, so... Yeah, you, you have to, it depends also. Like, what perspective do you need this answer from? Do you need this answer from a gym owner's perspective? Do you need this answer from a coach's perspective? Do you need this answer from just a training partner's perspective? Um, yeah, it seems like an inc incomplete question, but let, let's, let's dive into it a little bit. So it depends on what the gym cancer is doing. If he's just causing like social issues, like if everyone's going out to eat and this person like, consistently does behavior that's just detrimental to a, a group, um, warn him. I would say give him three warnings to straighten up and then I would get rid of him. I, I, I would not keep him around my gym. Um, if we're talking about in terms of For example, someone who's consistently injuring other people, um, I would have to say I would tell him that he couldn't train at my gym anymore. You know, just hypothetically. Let's say you have a, a one guy who qualifies as being a quote-unquote gym cancer. Let's say that he goes to this, he goes to the same spot every day, and then he picks on someone to a crazy degree, and then issues cascade from theirs. 
from there. You know, people are uncomfortable. Uh, you know, I don't like that analogy. So let's 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 backtrack a little bit. So let's say you're at a gym, and the gym there's a problematic person at the gym, aka a gym cancer, and he is consistently injuring people at your gym, right? In that case, you need to get rid of him because that person is going to injure other people. And as that happens, that will cause money to be taken out of the pocket of the gyms and or gym owner. Because people are not going to want to keep consistently train and go back to a place where they get, get hurt. Now, um, I would, I, I, I don't know. Depending on the scenario, I may or may not give this person a warning. But if they're consistently injuring people, I would give them a warning. And if they continue to do it, I would just have them leave. Um, I'm trying to think of it. And I don't know if you would call someone who is just too rough with smaller people and or the ladies at the gym. I don't know if you would call them a gym cancer or not. But the way that I would handle that is I would have a upper belt, especially one that's bigger to prove it bring a point home I would have an upper belt have a chat with him and um, hopefully everything gets flushed out but if not you know if, if the, the negative scenarios keep happening in that case I would also unfortunately have to tell that per person to leave Whew, I'm getting like a little woozy all right so what do you think of leg locks and wrist locks? So I admire leg locks. I like them. Um, I can't really practice them very well due to my knees. Uh, wrist locks, I do not like. Um, I understand why people do them. I understand that they're, they're legal and whatnot and so forth. But after meeting a submission, uh, a wrist lock specialist in my previous gym, my wrists ache and I'm not having none of that again. No, sir. Mm -mm. Would you recommend a 21-year-old starting MMA? I think that's what that means. Another one of those really poorly written requests slash questions. Uh, yes, I would, depending on if the 21-year-old seems like they have some skill, some dedication, and they just have like an innate mental toughness, I would say that they could start at 18. I mean, I'm sorry, 21. You know, um, it's a bit of a, an odd question, but an oddly structured question. I don't know why I'm reading it in. Sorry. No problem. So, Wale. Yeah. I've got four questions mm -hmm. from the audience. I, I've been answering some of them, but I've. I'm kind of rambling, but I want to get your your uh, your response. Let me know when you're okay. ready. Ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Outside of drilling slash in class practice, how does one improve their BJJ? Um, I mean, I think cross cross training, definitely. So you mm -hmm. know, doing stuff like definitely, like I've said before, you know, doing stuff that's going to increase your cardio. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, I, I mean, I think like running and stuff like that is great, but it's just not the same type of cardio when it comes to rolling. Right. But just like, you know, weights, definitely, you know, yeah. lifting. Uh, more so for like muscle endurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to, I mean, if you want to bulk, bulk up, fine, whatever. But I think um specifically for jiu-jitsu like muscle endurance and just like explosive workouts because that's you know when you're rolling that's kind of that's kind of what you're doing you know you roll really explosively and then it settles down and then you know roll explosively settles down back and forth like that right yeah, yeah. that was completely different from how i answered it earlier yeah yeah that's that was, that was a good answer uh, How did you answer it? I said to drill. Drill more, mm -hmm. which is, is actually against mm -hmm. the question because it says outside of drilling. Mm 
Yeah. Uh, you know what? Actually, <laughs> I can't remember if I said that or not. Uh, Drill I, more. And I also the answer. <laughs> outside of drilling, how do you improve your BJJ? Drill more. More. <laughs> I also <laughs> said to not use your uh, strength advantage if when you're rolling. Yeah. That, that way, yeah. I mean, I I think there is. Uh, um, I think there is a place for using strength, you know. Yeah, well, I think strength without technique is kind of pointless. You need to, because I, I think the problem, I think why people say don't use strength mm -hmm. is because a lot of times people come into jujitsu and they just basically muscle their way through a technique. Yes. Yeah. And as opposed to learning the technique and then, you know, applying it properly and then you know using then using your strength you can use your strength at that point yeah because i mean and especially in a competition i'm not going to tell someone don't use your strength you know don't yeah but make sure you find that strength in in the proper way using the proper technique it's um when i you know and i said earlier when i stopped using my strength advantage i learned mm -hmm. more quicker yeah. So it's gotten to the point where I I don't like using my strength advantage at all. Next thing you gotta be tying your hand behind one hand behind your back. <laughs> oh no. Like sometimes I have fun with it. I completely overpowered my cousin earlier today. That was hilarious. <laughs> and then I and like Phil used to remember Phil used to sit on people? Yeah. Yeah, I sat on. It was great. I highly recommend it. You should try it. <laughs> Um, so the second question was a little bit deeper and Hey folks, can you send me the questions through Twitch and not my cell phone, please? Thank you. <laughs> the sending it to my phone is just distracting when it sends to Twitch. I can see it a little easier. Um, all right. So how would you handle gym cancers? Ooh. I mean, you mean me, uh, is it from the perspective as a student there or uh, from the perspective as an owner? Hold on, let me double check because I don't, I don't think they specified on that one. Wait a second. Pick one. It doesn't specify. I mean, as a student, at the end of the day, I think it's, you know, I... It's not my my place, so just refer to the owner. Yeah, you know, it's, there's no there's no point in trying to go up against someone who's just you know, you toxic. Know, yeah, exactly. There, mm -hmm. that's the word for it. Yeah, who's just toxic? It's just gonna create more animosity and drama. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think as a if I were an owner, I will tr try to. Because, I mean, there's some people who are toxic for a reason. There's, like, something behind it. You know? Yeah. But there are also people who are toxic just because that's their personality. And, you know, they just want to go in there and smash everybody. Yeah. So, you know, I think discerning the difference really would kind of, kind of inform what I would do. You know, mm -hmm. if it's, like, toxic because of something's going on in their life or whatever then that's an opportunity to kind of talk to them and see what's going on but uh i mean if it's just like toxic because for the sake of being toxic yeah i, I think everyone deserves a chance so mm -hmm. like hey let them know hey cut it out mm -hmm. and if they keep doing it again kick them out it's it's not not worth it yeah i um I went through a couple of a couple of ideas, but one that you point out pointed out was that, you know, you, you may not always know the or understand the reason, up front, yeah. you know, but and, and I agree with that. I'm actually re really an advocate of second chances now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think everybody should deserve another shot at something. I mean, yeah. one one last shot. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> There has to be kind of a, a limit, you know. Yeah. Not not two or three, but, you know, one. 
the question though is what do you do in that situation when that person is sort of the the top person at the gym or they're like you know they're basically the reason why people come they pull a lot of people into the gym but they themselves are just toxic hmm that's a good question well if it's the top person at the gym and they're the toxic one, mm -hmm. uh, everybody has the option to train somewhere else. Do you see what I mean? If it's the head instructor, owner of the gym, if it's the number one person in in that building, in that organization. Like, like number one student. Or number one student. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're not exempt. They'd get, they'd get that smoke too. Mm. You know, it, it, when you confront, in my opinion, when you confront someone who's exhibiting toxic behavior, it, it's worse to that person to get to get talked to than it is to get disciplined. Do you do you understand what I'm saying? Not quite. Not quite. But what Not, do you mean by by talk to? Kind of like, hey, your behavior is affecting everybody in a negative way. Might I suggest cutting that cutting that out? Like that's what I mean as by talk to. to, as opposed to disciplining them. Yeah, because usually when people are at that level of misbehavior, where this they can be described as toxic, especially at, at adults and like older teenagers, um, discipline doesn't seem to work very much. Does it doesn't seem to work as well? Yeah, you know, you mean like. Maybe kicking them off the mat, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You know, if if you tell, if you remove them, for example, if you remove them from the mat as, as disciplinary action, from what I've seen, a lot of times they get angrier. Yeah. So that that seems to be like, on paper, it seems to be a good option to to get the point across, but at the yeah. same time, it could backfire. Well, I mean, I I think it really depends on what's going on like if the behavior in the moment is affecting the class or whatever whatever's going on then i i think they do need to be kicked off yeah you know because it's like you know you they're not the only ones there everyone else is paying just yeah. as much as they are to go there and to train yeah and, and honestly so, in hindsight a lot of those types of people usually don't last very long anyways yeah. Not, not because they get, you know, maliciously injured or hurt or even, you know, murdered. It's just that um, their personality doesn't really mesh well with the over, overall jujitsu, you know, gym culture yeah. generally. So, sure. yeah, sometimes it, sometimes the owner and head coach doesn't even have to say anything. Sometimes the, the student body like, works Ooh. itself out. So you're going to backtracking what were what were we gonna plan on doing sunday going to grindhouse was it yeah i gotta find out what's going on on sunday uh but i might go to grindhouse say nine to twelve nine to eleven nine to eleven okay yeah i might go to grindhouse but if not i might go to uh beta on monday yeah i don't know if i could do all all three, because I gotta do open mat tomorrow too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Man, if you yeah, gotta if you're bored on Friday, you should if you can make the drive, come out to No Gi in Chantilly. Yeah, I, I gotta. I was just about to say I gotta put together my schedule so that like I can make it out there regularly. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. You have to watch out. Yeah, we you... should, uh... Huh? Go ahead. Got a what? No, no, go ahead. I was saying, we should, we should, uh, what's it called? We should plan, like, every few weeks or so, just roll and, you know, do class and then go out afterwards or something. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, there is a place I like near Chantilly called Hotspot. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you... I think we've been there. It's like a soup place. Oh, soup place. No, I don't think I've been there. Yeah, you can make make your own type soup. They give you like noodles and vegetables and all sorts of meats and stuff. It's great. Oh. Uh, yeah. 
uh, back to the questions, though. Um, what do you think of people who specialize in leg locks and wrist locks? Is that a thing? A <laughs> do, do people actually, like, specialize in, well... People do. I mean, remember that one guy at Pentagon who does all he basically did? Yeah, my wrists still sing about him. Um, I don't know. It's so... You know, it's an age-old topic. I, you know, wrist locks are legitimate. And, like, what what was it? Wrist locks and leg locks? Or? Yeah, leg locks is yeah. popular in Nogino. I mean, it's, it's, it's legitimate, but if that's your one and only thing you want to only go to then you're limiting yourself at the end of the day you know yeah the guy who used to do wrist locks at pentagon like his guard passing and like all of his other techniques suffered yeah and it's just like you know yeah it's great for a quick submission but at the end of the day it's it's like that's not if you're using that as your your one and only go-to submission then that's you're you're actually limiting yourself i think yeah you are i agree with that yeah but what? I mean, I you know again it's legitimate. You know I, you know people always complain about them because you know it's seen as a cheap shot, especially wrist, wrist locks. But you know hey, you gotta you gotta learn how to get out of wrist locks, or not get wrist locked. Yeah. Yeah, hard pass. Yeah. My my wrists are still but, kind of singing from that guy. <laughs> for me personally, I I don't do a lot of wrist locks. I might do it in a pinch. I might do it like if if it's if I'm in a weird position and you know I see someone's wrist out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll try it out. Yeah. But... No, I, I don't think anybody should, you know, rely completely on a specific skill set, especially when it comes to yeah. jiu jitsu. So you have to be versatile. Versatility. Yeah, and you you end up pissing people off when you wrist lock them all the time, and they will come for you. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, last one. Would you recommend a twenty one year old? I I hate the way that the grammar is on some of these questions. Would you recommend a twenty one year old man start MMA? So I guess uh, he's twenty one year old no and wants training. to start MMA with no training at all. Or hold on, let me double check my phone. What is this? Oh. Oh. Uh, it does not specify. Um, if without training it at all, I would definitely know, because <laughs> you you'll get hurt. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I mean. If you do have training, you know, I, and I think it needs to be, you know, specifically, well, obviously you need to have the striking and the, the grappling. So if you have some sort of background in some striking or some grappling, then yeah, sure. I mean, I guess maybe the question is more so, you know, is 21 too old to get into MMA? Um, is it? I, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of what, what's your goal? You know, are you trying to do this pro? Are you trying to do like amateur or whatever harder? Yeah. Than if you, were, you know, like 18 younger. Yeah. If you're starting out younger, but if you're just saying, Hey, I, I want to try it MMA, see what it's like, you know, I don't think 21 is, you know, you, I still think you can do it at 21. Mm -hmm. It looks like okay, um, I started BJJ super late, but uh, uh, I, then again, I I know I'm too old to to do MMA. When did you start? What age? Um, well, let's see, thirty six, thirty five. Oh, then yeah. technically we started at the eight, same age range. Yeah, yeah, dude. I think but yeah, like. Go ahead. I I know myself. I'm I'm not gonna. I think you can do. You can make it work at any age, basically. But the question is, how much, how much work and effort are you willing to put into it? Because the older you get, the more you have to overcome to be able to to train effectively. You know. Yeah. And then you also have to think about what's your schedule like. You know, do you have other commitments? Because, you know, training for MMA is, it's a huge commitment, you know, 
Yeah. Especially if you're if you're thinking about going pro or you're going amateur, it's a it's a huge commitment. So I would say at 21, you know, it's it's still possible, but you gotta really take stock of of what your goal is, and if you have the time and and you know the mental fortitude to do it. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I keep getting these. I I have a bunch of more questions, but I think they're troll. Like, I think people are trolling me. Why? Because these questions are, for example. (laughs) Hold on. Have you ever been cross faced while wearing your glasses? Frankie, stop. (laughs) I don't know if this is Frankie. No, I don't. I'm just joking. Probably not. What? How high does a truly bring your power level? Okay, that's that's got to be somebody. <laughs> I drink a truly somebody one time. Been, someone yeah. who's either in the group or someone who's been watching. Yeah. Let's see. Some, a lot of these are have like really poor grammar and sentence structure, so I can't really make heads or tails out of them. Really. Um. Let's see. Would well, you ever train well, with a parent? With a parent? Yeah. As in me, myself, as an adult, training with a parent? No, I guess what they're asking, because mind you, I don't really have context clues here much. Mm-hmm. It's just a question. Um, if your dad were to walk in the gym... Would you train with him? I oh, think with that, my Yeah, I think it's really um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'll train. What about uh, your... wrist walking? <laughs> Evil. <laughs> I see Yo is rubbing off on you. Yeah. No. So, um, um, I haven't rolled with him in a while. Say again? I said I haven't rolled with him in a while. Yeah, he's, uh, he's okay. It's been a while since I've rolled. I think it was like February last time I rolled him. Yeah. February, January, February, something like that. Kind of feels like everyone's disbanded in a sense. Did you see the... I think they have. So I was talking to Kadeem and he was looking into going to Lloyd's because of the distance. And he has a new new kid and he lives in yeah. Maryland. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if... For what he wants, I don't know if Lloyd's is a good gym for him but i could be What's wrong he just wants some place to like go and train and, and learn a, learn some techniques like he's not really too worried about competing and stuff well yeah i mean lloyd's is a it's it's like competition first place so yeah 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 so i don't know if they have people there that just train to train but i don't know yeah i guess they do but it's it's I, I don't know the culture there, and I also don't know if it's something where they they push people to 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 compete, you know, because there are some schools like that that is kind of like you know yeah where you're to to make competitors. Yeah, I I have encountered that. Yeah. So. Oh crap! Our chat just disappeared. <laughs> oh, they're gonna flood my t- my my phone. Um, what else is there? I think we answered everything right now that was answerable. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you, re- so go ahead. Do you want to take a troll question? <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> Pick one troll question. Okay. This, this one's kind of gross. We can, we can skip to another one if we want. <laughs> If a white belt was about to submit you and you were inverted mm. and your only avenue of escape was passing gas in his face, would you do it? Yes. Of course I would. <laughs> oh, God. I wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. You say you would or you wouldn't? Would not. Why? You know, There's a video of a guy at a, I think it was like a Naga competition. Like, you know, big black guy versus a big, big white guy. And the white guy apparently 
passed gas in the other guy's face, and he, like, pushed him oh. off him and then threw up on the mat. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have, cause anybody to throw I up. I mean, you, you, you do have the... You, you do have to run the risk of uh, shitting yourself while you do that. This is true. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the, an immediate DQ. An immediate DQ. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, the ju- like the, the staff walked over and threw him paper towels to clean it up. Like they wanted him to clean it up himself. <laughs> Like, like this is not this is this is not what I I get paid for. <laughs> it's like this is not speedy or convenient. Um, oh, sorry, I was gonna read another troll question. Okay, as upper belts, do you think it's your job? All right, we may not want to answer this one, but I'll read it anyways. As upper belts, do you think it's your job to hit on? The younger, more attractive training partners of yours. <laughs> All right, folks, it's been real. Good night. <laughs> and final thoughts, Wale. I mean, what, why, why is there a differentiation between upper belts and, and white belts? I think it, it sounds like oh, who's salty. It sounds like the white belt salty about uh, someone hitting on someone that they're interested they were, in. They were interested in. Yeah, I think someone is 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 is, is mad. Someone's got feelings. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me, yeah. let me see if there's another one. Oh, okay. So, an annoying training partner of mine always brings their corgi. To class and it doesn't like me and nips me constantly how would you handle it this is stop messing with the dog <laughs> first of all I'd ask if it was a boy dog why <laughs> I was gonna tell him to... <laughs> I, I can't finish that sentence I it makes me seem like a jerk all right I'm gonna pass on that one Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, that's a little personal. I'll read that one. How do you get your annoying kids to stop being loud at open mat? Oh, that's not directed towards me. Okay. <laughs> what do you think, Wale? Um, is this my kid personally? Because my kid personally, I give the look. Other people's kids? Ah. Uh... Well, I guess you could roll against them. You know what? I keep telling people this. If you want to be number one and you're an adult, go to the kids' class, participate, and then destroy every kid while rolling. Yeah. Sure fire away to become number one. <laughs> yeah. That's that's when you get your ass beat by all of them. <laughs> yeah. They gang up on you. So, yeah. dude, last, last week at, at Chantilly, the fourteen-year-olds like decided they wanted to rush me, and like three uh-huh. of them, like were just like giving me a hug, and, and I thought they were just hugging me, right? These little uh, jerks like dragged me to the ground. <laughs> I was like, "What the?" Fuck? They start punching. Like, what is this for? Yeah, dude, they they straight up jumped me. <laughs> I mean, they didn't hit me or anything, but like, oh, Uncle Thomas, give me a hug. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, wait a minute. What are you two doing? It's like, hey, <laughs> let, let go of me. And then they just hug me and pick me up and bam, right on the ground. It's like, mm, That's hilarious. Jerks. So, I don't know. I'm hungry and I need a shower. So, we're going to cut it a little short tonight. Honestly, I'm not right. I'm not feeling the greatest. So, Wale, um, if anything, I'll see you Sunday. Let me know about Monday. Because I I I've, I've never stepped foot in beta and you know I'd like to pay a visit so yeah yeah definitely yeah just keep me informed and and we'll go from there because quite frankly it's gonna be Father's Day yeah. and as fathers we deserve to do what we want to do exactly and that is beat up our friends <laughs> wait no in their pajamas in their yeah in our pajamas <laughs> our friends are our, our not our food wait 
I don't know what I'm talking about. Our friends are our our friends are food too. That's our friends are food too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll see you next time. I'll see you Sunday, if anything. All right. Um, I might hit up Elite Shooting Sports mm-hmm. at some point if if you still get a pass and, you, and you're bored. So just let okay. me know. Yeah. All right. See y'all later. Peace. Recordings.